Welcome to Your Family's Health, the program that focuses on health care issues with unique and different modalities for taking charge of your health today. Experts talk weekly with our continuing roster of guests from around the country and right here in Nassau County to keep you up to date on the latest health issues and trends. Take care of your mind, body, and soul. Spend the next half hour with the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC, and get on the journey to better health. Hello and welcome to Your Family's Health. My name is Dr. Janine Cookerard from the nursing department here at Nassau Community College. Today you're going to learn about a new health-focused program partnership between the Long Island Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame and Catholic Health called Health in Harmony which is a multifaceted program designed to improve health and wellness through music. My guest today is Kelly Luang, a Hall of Fame board member and their director of community outreach. So Kelly, welcome to your family's health on the voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you allowing me to be here to talk about Health and Harmony. So this is really a cool initiative. And um, tell us about the Long Island Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame. How long has it been around? And tell me what it's all about. Sure. So the Long Island Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame as an organization, we're a nonprofit, Mm -hmm. has been around since 2004. However, we didn't have a physical building until last year in 22 when we opened up in Stony Brook. Mm -hmm. So prior to that, we were known for hosting large gala events, and we've inducted over 120 Long Islanders who are involved in the music industry, whether they're performers or they're behind the scenes. And now that we have our own building, you can actually come visit us and see memorabilia and uh, video clips and get to know more about the artists that we consider are homegrown. And for us, Long Island includes Brooklyn and Queens because we go from water to water. So that's something that people like to know about us, too, that uh, we're across the board and we have diverse uh, inductees ranging from way back from a Gershwin to um, just a couple weeks ago, we inducted the Fat Boys and um, Robin Wilson from the Gin Blossoms. Oh, that's nice. So who are some of the members? You You gave me a few of them. Do they have to be from Long Island? Is that part of the criteria? They don't have to be born on Long Island, okay. but they have to have an important part of either living here a long period and being involved in Long Island. Um, some of them include, um, obviously, a Billy Joel, Harry Chapin. Um, we've got uh, recently uh, we inducted... Um, uh, Robert Earl from Fog Hat, um, mm-hmm. Zebra, mm-hmm. Randy Jackson is from here. Um, Rakim is from here, who was a, a very big celebration this year with the 50th year of hip hop. So we have plenty of members from there. Run DMC, um, LL Cool J. Wow. So there's all ranges, but um, and ages, but we do have a criteria of having to be around a little bit. So it's not necessarily the most current artist that uh, people think of right off the bat today. That's awesome. So when uh, you say you're in Stony Brook, is that where people gather uh, to meet or is it a literal museum and memorabilia there? Sure. I'm so happy to say that we now actually have a real amazing museum. Um, It's 8,800 square feet. It's in Stony Brook Village, which yeah. is a great place to spend the day. So if anyone has looking for a fun day, it's, there's lots to do besides even just visiting us. Um, we currently have uh, a special exhibit called the Legendary Club Scene of Long Island, which goes over the 60s, 70s, and 80s. All the different clubs that Long mm-hmm. Island's known for. We're known for having garage bands and lots of live music because... Um, That's just uh, what Long Island's all about, especially we know in the summer. So um, if you come to that, you'll see lots of costumes, memorabilia, and vintage video from places like Malibu, OBI, My Father's Place. Uh, It's a a great uh, flashback for a lot of people to good times in their life. That sounds awesome. Tell us a little bit about you, though. I want to hear what made you become a part of this whole Long Island Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame. Sure. Um, I initially got to know the organization when I was um, the head of corporate communications for a banking company, and I wanted to get involved in outreach and nonprofit work. So we were contributing uh, to the organization, and then after a while, they asked me if I'd like to join the board, and that was about 10 years ago. Mm. So I said yes, because I love music. I'm not a musician, but I certainly can appreciate it. Do you sing? 
Um, no, not okay. very well. Only in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the truth is, is that I fell in love with the people. It's a range. Uh, the board is a very working board, which some boards are are different. But mm-hmm. this one, everyone's hands on deck, and we have uh, people that range from uh, Larry Dunn, who is W L I R's Larry the Duck from the day, uh, Jim Faith, who runs the Great South Bay Music Festival, our chairman's Ernie Canadeo, who owns EGC. Uh, communications. So a wide range of people, founders, uh, Norman Preslin's a professor at Stony Brook. So it's a wonderful group of people who had a passion. And it's just amazing that it's finally come to fruition with this awesome place. So it's an awesome place in and of itself. But how did it become connected to Catholic health? How did sure. that connection come about? Um, well, the team at Catholic Health found out about our opening of the hall, and they were interested in being a part of it and supporting us. As a nonprofit, obviously, we have to fundraise like everyone else to uh, keep our doors open and things. So they wanted to be a sponsor and a supporter. So they signed on as our naming sponsor. However, they didn't want it to just be a stagnant relationship. So they wanted to create something where they could be a part of it and we could work with them to um, come together and collaborate. And that's how Health and Harmony came up because we wanted something that was tied into health Mm -hmm. and their work with patients and their Mm -hmm. outreach to the community since Mm -hmm. Long Live Long Island is Catholic Health's mantra. We wanted to be a part of that. I think that's great because as a nurse, that's a part of what we do with patients that we really incorporate, you know, music, Mm -hmm. you know, the love of music and understand the connection and how that really helps with health. So is that the thought here with this kind of connection between the music uh, industry as well as the health industry that there is benefits on both ends and now together uh, the whole population can be benefited from this collaboration. Exactly. Yeah. For us, it was kind of to find that local niche, too, by incorporating our inductees, which are all Long Island-based artists, and all of the patients that Catholic Health works with yeah. are on Long Island. We were kind of marrying two things yeah. to, to bring them together. Um, with regards to your point on um, health, it's whether it's stress and anxiety, something that everyone experiences, or whether it's something more um, in depth like a Parkinson's or a dementia, there's there's so much um, to be done with music. So um, we're hoping to just introduce and educate in a very easy way. Um, we have a website, healthandharmonyli.org, mm-hmm. and people can go and learn. They can read articles. They can take a little quiz, which will lead to a playlist that might be beneficial for them. Of course, they can go make their own in addition. Mm-hmm. But we just want to inspire people to start to think about these two things together if they haven't already. So what types of playlists do you have? Do you have, um, I know it's all j- types of genre of music. Mm-hmm. So um, how do you, you do that? You mentioned you just go there. It's, it's like a multiple choice kind of sure. questionnaire it's a self-assessment quiz we okay. call it. we try to keep it not too formal since it's it's we're not in person with the, when someone's doing this mm-hmm. um so they kind of put in how they're feeling that day and it'll pop up with one of our particular playlists the playlists we have right now for health and harmony include um ones for relaxation and calm And those tend to have lower beats per minute because that's basically at 60 beats per minute, um, a song kind of ties into your heart rate. And so it helps you relax. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have ones what we call for movement and motivation. So those go to a higher beat range and they go up and then they they level off and then they come back down. So like if you were doing a jog or a run, you might want 120 beats per minute. So we have playlists that are designed for that. That's great. And then we also do ones we call Memory Lane, and these are great for caretakers and for people with dementia or people that just want to help with their memory um, because they're done either by decade or just an oversight of um, older songs that mix in in beats. Mm -hmm. Um, And this way, um, people can uh, start to familiarize themselves with things from their past if they're having a hard time doing that. That's great. I know I use music to work out. I have to have my music, my upbeat music, you know, and I don't want anything quiet. I want something really fast paced so you can actually put in what you're going to do for the day or that moment. And it'll give you that upbeat music. Yeah, we have... 
we don't have it broken down that far yet. Okay. I think over time, maybe. Okay. Um, and but it is based on the fact that the it's it's a faster paced music, mm-hmm. and again, right now our lists all include inductees, so it might not be the most current song per se because you're dealing with something from a, a different time period. But it definitely gives you a sense of that, and then we're hoping people will also go build their own playlists when they've got a sense of how it all works Mm -hmm. and we also have seasonal playlists which are not tied to the to the quiz but more we put them up there because we want people to think about the fact that you can tie music into everything so we have a falling in love playlist because it's fall and we have like a rainy day Day. playlist and those kind of things that's nice you're listening to your family's health on the voice of nassau community college 90.3 whpc my name is dr janine Award. And today you're learning about new health focused program partnership between the Long Island Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame and Catholic Health called Health and Harmony, which, um, which is a multifaceted program designed to improve health and wellness through music. My guest today is Kelly Luang, a Hall of Fame board member and their director of community outreach. So uh, my question to you is, do you see yourself developing an app uh, eventually that we can kind of download so that we have a direct connection to? Because I can see this being used in hospitals probably um, for patients who are, you know, in the bed, bedridden and have access, right, to this this music or this lit playlist, if you will. Well, it's perfect that you should mention that. I do know that we are brainstorming lots of ways to extend this, but I know for sure that we've been already working with uh, the team behind the scenes at Catholic Health to start to make plans for it to be in their facilities. Mm. So um, obviously patients have different ways to access sound or video in their rooms, also in certain places where um, families might be gathering and or even the doctors and the other uh, caretakers in the hospital who need a a respite. Mm -hmm. So uh, our long-term goal is to make sure that we have access for this type of thing for them as well. So how can people get involved with the Hall of Fame? Well, the Hall of Fame, like I said, in Stony Brook, we welcome volunteers. We have lots of people that like to spend time there. So they come and they help and they introduce people to the hall. You can come visit and be a guest. Um, We would love to have everyone come see what we have. And uh, we also have memberships so people can come back again and again. We usually have live, live music on Sundays, which is kind of fun to have in the middle of an exhibit, which is kind of fun. And is there any chance I'll run into Billy Joel? One never knows. Oh, wow. Um, we do actually have, on occasion, um, inductees that have walked in when we didn't even know they were mm. coming. Um, in a couple of weeks, we have uh, J.J. French from Twisted Sisters going to be around. And we have an induction ceremony for the illusion. Uh, so we expect... Uh, that there'll be a lot of uh, people stopping by on a regular basis. So is there a way that I can find up the upcoming activities and events that are scheduled so that I can make my way there? Absolutely. Our website for the Hall of Fame is limehoff, L-I-M-E-H-O-F dot org. And on there we have an event calendar and anyone can come on down. We're open Wednesday through Sunday, 12 to 5. So can you share with us uh, any kind of personal experience that you had personally with this initiative? Is it, would you consider it new? Yes. The Health and Harmony Initiative is definitely new. The hall itself opened last November. Okay. um, But this initiative is really kicked off in the last few months that we've been focusing on how to implement it and put it out there. We've talked about it for a little time earlier. Um, I would say right now the exciting part is that the team at Catholic Health is getting really excited about it. And um, we've got their um, team of music therapists and um, participants that want to get more involved. So I think as we get more clinicians involved, we'll be able to take it down to that level to where it's also helping people that um, are actually patients within the facilities versus our initial thoughts, which were sharing it with the general public about like stress and anxiety and mm-hmm. how to use it for yourself. But I look forward to where we actually prescribe almost a playlist oh, wow. for someone when they're yes. in the hospital. And of course, I mean the clinicians, not myself. Yeah. So, so if a clinician who 
uh, maybe as a music therapist wants to get a job at at this particular facility, how do they access? Do, can can they come? Is it on the site where you will hire, or they can have that employment opportunity? Well, um, the Health and Harmony Initiative is really a, a collaboration that's. Um, not tied to the employment component. Okay. So the employment component's Catholic Health. They have their um, their folks there. And um, I know that we'll be working with um, lots of students along the way, too. So I'm sure their internship opportunities are there as well. And we do have the same at the Hall of Fame where we'll be hosting, like, workshops for the laymen to come learn. And whereas at the Catholic health facilities, it'll be for patients themselves mm-hmm. and or for their clinicians. Mm-hmm. Are there any specific musical instruments that you can think of uh, that you have become um, aware of that has been particularly calming to alleviate anxiety? You know, life is just stressful. Sure. I would say anything we've noticed, obviously, anything on the, in in the winds and in the um, the world of orchestra or wind ensembles have been... Uh, very calming and soothing. And we do have a lot of orchestrated pieces. Um, we have uh, examples of inductees like Carter Burwell, whose music is from Twilight and yeah. things where people would really enjoy that from a rel- relaxation point of view. So how do you incorporate music into your self-care routine? Do you do that? Oh, I absolutely do. <laughs> what and do you I, like to hear? And I have the privilege of learning about new music every time I'm at the hall. I usually take a different inductee and go home and listen to music in case I haven't heard it before. Because with 125 inductees, there's a lot of people to learn about. So um, I do use classical when I'm doing work, and okay. I and I can't catch myself singing. I along. love classical when um, I'm doing work. Yeah. I like lyrics. So if I have a song with lyrics, I can't focus on anything else. <laughs> so in the car, I'm jamming to that kind of music where I'm singing and probably loud because no one can hear me. <laughs> but um, when I'm trying to focus, I, I use classical. And when I'm trying to relax, I use instrumentals as well. So how about jazz? Absolutely. Yeah. Mose Allison is, is an inductee. Yeah. And uh, we have quite a few um, amazing artists from Long Island that are are, are jazz artists. And, um, I mean, you can throw in some Coltrane and uh, the world's a better place. Oh, yeah. So um, going back to the Hall of Fame, what kinds of events? Tell me about that gala. I love galas. Sure. Get dressed up. And um, our induction galas usually happened every every other year, and we would induct new members into the hall. Um, most of those happened at very large venues on the island, whether it was at the Paramount or at mm. Ohika Castle or you know Westbury. Now this last year, because we have the building, we've had smaller, intimate. Uh, one one person at a time inductions this mm. year because we didn't want to stretch ourselves too thin by trying to host another huge gala okay. while we are also opening the Hall of Fame for the first time. But we are hoping to go back to larger uh, galas in the near future. Yeah. Well, you say gala or gala? You know what? I go back and forth. <laughs> you know. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, I guess tomato. It's, it's a Long Island thing. So is everybody invited to the to gala? Or yes, it- anybody can buy a ticket when it's put out there. It's kind of like a concert. You get you get a combination of concert information and you get to celebrate someone being inducted into the hall. How about any kind of educational initiatives? Do you have anything like that for young people who want to learn about music or become more involved or entrenched in how it helps them? Uh, oh, absolutely. You know, cope. Sure. With with um the Long Island Music Hall of Fame, we also have a program. We work with Steve Van Zant's Teach Rock program. So there we actually just had uh, a bunch of teachers come in to learn how they can incorporate music into their curriculum. So we work with teachers. And with regards to students, we also sponsor educational programs and also uh, scholarship funds. Mm. So a lot of high school students that are going to go on to u- put music into their lives somehow, whether it be produce, sing, perform, um, they apply for scholarships we have. We also acknowledge um, annually an educator of note, which we're taking nominations for now, which mm-hmm. is a music educator on Long Island that's made a difference. And we invite people to nominate oh, nice. someone for that. That's really nice. You're listening to Your Family's Health on the Voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Dr. Janine Cookerard, and today you're learning about a new health-focused program partnership between the Long Island Music 
and Entertainment Hall of Fame and Catholic Health called Health and Harmony. It is a multifaceted program designed to improve health and wellness through music. My guest today is Kelly Luang, a Hall of Fame board member and their director of community outreach. So Kelly, the physical museum is in Stony Brook. Um, is it on the main uh is a main street that yes. we can get to it, access it? Yes, it's it's, a, it's at 97 Main Street. So it's right in, if you drive into Stony Brook, it's a beautiful little town. And they have a village center with lots of shops and, and restaurants. And okay. we're in that village center. So uh, you can come in and spend some time with us and walk around the village for the day. It's fantastic. Is it open Monday through? It's open. We're open Wednesday through Sunday, 12 okay. to 5. And then the village is extended hours, too. And um, with that facility there, is it large enough that you can host like parties or people coming in to rent the space? Because that sounds like an interesting space. Yes, it actually is. And we've done that. And we welcome people to inquire about that. Obviously, we do it when the museum is closed. But we've hosted holiday parties. We've had birthday events and cocktail receptions there because it is a fun place to be. And um, a nice, different way to walk around a museum. So do you see, um, I know that physicians would be interested in, and therapists as well, but have you had anybody, any patients that actually have used, that have reported back to you that they've used this opportunity and it really helped them um, to reduce their anxiety or it helped them in some way? Have you heard that? We've had some conversations with people that have tested out our quizzes and things of that nature. So, yes, we know that people are appreciating that. I think it's really that part is inspiring them to understand what kind of music might benefit them beyond what they know from what they like already. Mm -hmm. So that we've definitely seen. And I'm looking forward to when we actually get to have physical workshops in person where we can actually talk through how the brain actually works. Because I think that's kind of interesting. And I think that will bring um, people a lot of knowledge as to why music helps them. So we're hoping to create some of those workshops in the new year that will be able to invite people to come to learn more, especially caregivers, so that they can benefit from it too. Because we know caregivers, whether it be people that work at a hospital or whether it's just someone's family member, Mm -hmm. they also can benefit from a lot of these things for what they can do for the patient, but what they can do for themselves as well. So now when you have a practitioner um, and a patient, is there an area in the facility where they can actually come and do a therapy session in the facility itself? Or is this done more virtually? How is the therapy session, the connection there with Catholic Health and yourself? Well, with Catholic Health, the long-term plan is that someone would go right up to a patient and have the opportunity to talk to them and get a sense of what they need and then connect the dots. Okay. Right now, we have it simply as a resource that you can go to the website, and if someone wants to lead a patient to the website, they can, to do the self-assessment or just to access the playlists on their own just to hear new things and relax. Um, we're hoping to incorporate all of that into the system at some point, mm-hmm. but that hasn't happened yet. When it does, we know that we'll be reaching more and more people. So we're baby stepping all the way yeah. up to that. And Catholic yeah. Health's been amazing with their um, wanting to really give patients an overall life health experience. So when you said this museum um, has memorabilia, where do you get your memorabilia from? Do do the artists donate some of their things to the museum? Yes, absolutely. So our inductees are fabulous. And I will say now that we have a building, it's it's becoming more comfortable because obviously they know where things are going. So We've known many of our inductees on a personal level for years, but we didn't have a space to keep these wonderful things. So now that we do, if you come on down, you'll see costumes worn by Debbie Gibson, Mm. by Taylor Dane, by Dee Schneider of Twisted Sister. You'll see Vanilla Fudge's organ. You'll see... Uh, Blue Oyster Colt's drums, wow. uh, Joan Jett's car, one of her first cars she ever oh, bought. Oh, actual a, a car in her there. Her car is in the museum. So these are fun things that they've uh, all shared with us, and we're beyond grateful. Is there someone, okay, when I go into a museum, typically I have a tour guide to come and to kind of take me step by step so that I know what I'm looking at. Is there a tour guide there that will be available? Right now what we have... 
mostly our volunteers who are there. Mm -hmm. Um, We give a kind of overview when you walk in. um, And then they're there to kind of help you as you need it. it. It's a balance between some people. It's not where there's so much that someone wants to be toured through the entire thing. So we try to be there to answer questions, but not kind of force you along a path you might not want to go. That's great. Now, tell me in terms of going back to the music therapy, Mm -hmm. I know that we talked about some illnesses. What are some other illnesses that you've noticed that have been beneficial with this music therapy? Well, rather than make it an illness, I would say just the idea of pain management. Pain management. So pain management is something that we've talked to. And again, we don't necessarily have anything directly on the site just about that. But what we've learned from speaking with the music therapists is that, you know, music kind of takes your brain away yeah. from that. So what it'll do is, you know, it doesn't necessarily eliminate it, but that the focus yeah. changes. And really you're feeling your brain, your pain in your head. Yes. So if your head is focused on something else, that's how the pain alleviates from your feeling and yeah. even though it's still existing so that's one thing that i think across the board mm-hmm. is a benefit and again that's personal because for some people it might be the very quiet music that does that for them and for other people it might be a, a little uh, a little more upbeat so yeah. everybody's different and that's a great thing for people to learn and have a conversation about so that they can be prepared for what they might need in the future. So it's a great addition to, I mean, for those that are experiencing cancer um, and have to deal with pain of these chronic illnesses, music is always a good um, adjuvant, if you will, or an addition to how you cope. So this is a great thing. We can find, I know you mentioned some, how we can find some information about this uh, initiative. Can you rehearse that with us again? Sure. Um, our website is Health and Harmony LI for Long Island, dot org. And on that website, you can see our playlist. You can connect to our playlist. You can take our quiz. You could read a lot of the, uh, the background information. And there's an event calendar there for as we start to build these workshops for the future and other things. We'll be sure to put them on there as well. And before you leave, what is the one thing you would like to leave with us when it comes down to health and harmony? that Long Island Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame and Catholic Health really believe that bringing the local connection is super important and it's interesting and dynamic and that's what makes us different. I think so too. Well, thank you for being here, Kelly Luang, the Long Island Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame board member and their director of community outreach. We appreciate all of this information about health and harmony and your partnership with Catholic Health. We hope you stay healthy and continue to do this great work. And thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. This is Dr. Janine Cookerard from the nursing department here at Nassau Community College. And we want to thank you for listening to this week's edition of Your Family's Health. We'd like to get your feedback on Your Family's Health. Send your comments by emailing them to whpc at ncc.edu. Podcasts of today's show are available on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This program was produced at the studios of Nassau Community College in cooperation with the nursing department. Join us next week for another edition of Your Family's Health on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.